Again, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is good to be here, and by now you should have an idea what this message is about, salt and light. And uh, we're going to focus on how the Pittsburgh Church of the Brethren can be salt and can be light, but more than that, we should be salt and we should be light. Let's start off with prayer. Lord, this is the message you've laid on my heart, salty light. As we get to today's message, we'll have a better understanding. What do I mean by salty light? So, Lord, I pray that um, I know we have a busy schedule and we have a lot of things on the table and on our plates. Let's just remove those items and focus on worshiping you through these songs and through this message. And I pray, Lord, that as we share this message, as we listen to it, we may understand it, that you will give us sight that we might see and a mind to understand and ears that we can really hear and give us a will to share not only live out this message but to share this message through Jesus Christ we pray amen as children of God we have various characteristics and this morning we're going to talk about two or focus on two of these characteristics we are the silent work of influence, and we give sight in darkness. They are the visible manifestation of God in people's life. There are two things in life that we value. They seem so insignificant, yet they are part of our survival. We either complain because we have too much and end up taking medication or because we have too little. One is hardly seen. The other makes things visible. And if I was to ask, if I was to ask you right now, what are those two characteristics? I am confident that you would say light and salt or salt and light. And you all would get a gold star. God's children, and we are all God's children, are both salt and light in this world. Now, I like the, uh, the expression, uh, the word tang versus flavor. A lot of times we say flavor. But I think today I want to use the word tang. If salt has lost its Tang. The problem today is that many believers have not only lost their tang, but also pepper. They have lost their pep. We need more salt and pepper Christians, not only in our churches, but in our communities. We need to be like salt that we create a thirst for Jesus. We need to be like light, that people can see the Jesus in us. When people see us, do they see Jesus? When we interface with people, do they have a thirst for Jesus? Today I want to share how the Pittsburgh Church of the Brethren and all believers, not just Pittsburgh, but all believers, can turn this world upside down. We start with verse 13. You are the salt of the earth. Before those verses, we read uh, the Sermon on the Mount. And the Beatitudes are elements of the Christian life. But this morning's verses deal with the Christian's influence. The question we should be asking ourselves is, is the Pittsburgh Church of the Brethren influential in our community? Are you, as a child of God, influential in society? Christians that are merciful, meek, peacemaking, and who are pure in heart will have a tremendous influence in the lives of those who don't know Jesus. And again, we know the importance of the word know. 
John 17, 3. If you know Jesus and his son, you will have eternal life. And we go over to 2 Thessalonians 1, 8, 9. It says, if you don't know Jesus and the scriptures and God, there will be eternal separation. So to know Jesus is a very, very important thing. In the New Testament, salt was seen as a necessity of life. Although personally, I think coffee ranks up there with it. Because of salt's seasoning and preservation qualities, it was one of the most highly prized minerals. The use of salt. We use salt in seasoning. In Bible times and today, salt is used for seasoning our food. Sometimes we use too much salt, and the doctor would tell you if you've been using too much salt. But thank the Lord I'm not talking about that kind of salt today. Salt was used to flavor the offerings and sacrifices. Romans 12.1 All who would present themselves a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. You see, believers must receive the saving salt which is the righteousness of Jesus Christ. In order for our lives to be a living sacrifice for God, they must be preserved and seasoned with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. You see, as we go through our life, we will either be seasoned with Jesus Christ or we will be contaminated with the world. It's a choice. Salt was used as a preservative. And salt is still used as a, to preserve food. As believers, we need to serve as a preservative against the evil of society. And all you got to do is look on Facebook, look on the news, and there's a lot of evil in this world. It was Jesus who said, you are the salt of the earth. So the question I ask you are, or is, are you a salty Christian? What role does salt play in your life? What role does salt play in a Pittsburgh church of the brethren? What did Jesus mean by this statement? You are the salt of the earth. Believer's salt is the silent witness of the Christian believer. Believer's salt is the silent witness of the Christian believer. It is the influence that you have over people's lives to season them and preserve them by bringing them to Jesus Christ. Jesus is saying to let your influence season people's lives for people's kingdom, for God's kingdom, for God's kingdom. Salt changes things. A little salt can add a lot of flavor to a pot of beans or a nice, thick, juicy ribeye. Add a little salt. Yes. I mean, we should be like ribeyes because everybody likes ribeyes. Well, almost everybody likes ribeyes. It only takes a little salt of influence to flavor a neighborhood or workplace. The whole issue of salt is seasoning, which is our influence. Again, what is your influence in your family when it comes to Jesus? What is your influence in your community when it comes to Jesus Christ. When it comes to your friends, are you an influence to them when it comes to Jesus? When I look out at you this morning, I must admit, you are all good looking. Well, most of you. I'm looking at myself. But God doesn't care if you look good. Do you think when we get, wake up, God says, Man, you're looking good today. I don't think God says you 
you looking good. I think God says, I want you to be influential today. Then you will be good. The salt is no good if it never leaves a salt shaker. How many of you have a salt shaker on your table and you never use it? You see, if you have a salt shaker on your table and you never use it, then it becomes nothing more than an ornament. You see, God doesn't want us to be an ornament. God wants us to be a shaker, that salt into the world. Sadly, we deny the, the salt function when we fail to mingle with people that are lost. You see, we need to become a salty socialite. Think about that. See, today at the church, when somebody says, what did you learn today from the sermon? You can say, well, I'm supposed to be a salty socialite. And of course, they're going to say, what is a salty socialite? See, the door's just been opened to you. You can get right on. Romans 12, 1. I'm going to um, read this differently. We are not to be of this world, but we are to live and be influential in this world. To deny the salt's influence is to deny the principle of God's kingdom. We are not to draw away from the community. We are to draw the community to us. How many times do we look at people when we look at them and say, they're not like us. Or, they don't live on the wrong side of the tracks. Or, they're not my type. Let me ask you this. What type? Who's not, who's not the right type of God? Is anybody down here on earth that Jesus says, nah, you're not the right type? See, Jesus said, you are the salt. And when we use our salt, it's not only just a specific person or a specific area. It's supposed to be like, uh, you ever sow grass? You take a hand and Spreading our salt. No, don't care if you're lands on just spreading our salt. Jesus was empathetic when he said, he didn't say you might or you ought to be. No, Jesus said you are the salt. You see, as we go through life, we are either the salt of this world or use the salt of the world. We are either a salt of influence or we have lost our saltiness. Point number two. We talked about salt. Let's go to light. Let's go to light. Light is a Christian's testimony. Light is described as a form of energy that is always moving. Kind of like me. I'm always moving. You see, Jesus wants us to be moving and not stationary in the pew. And those who are stationary in the pew, I can just say pew, because that's not where God wants us. God wants us to be out sharing the news of Jesus Christ. And I don't mean taking a Bible and just, you know, just, you know, just dumping a Bible. Be yourself. Share Jesus. Share your faith. Light has been a symbol of divine presence. Jesus said that he is the light of the world. But who is the true source of light? The answer is found in John 8, 12. Then Jesus spoke to them saying, this is Jesus. He says, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. And in Psalms 27, 1, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? 
The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? You know, when you witness your faith to somebody, the worst thing that's going to happen is they reject you. But the best thing that can happen is they accept Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. So you give them an option. And also, many times we are planting the seed of faith. And maybe somebody else who waters that seed. Now, I know we're humans, and we want to see the, 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 the benefits of what we do. I shared Jesus with John, and John accepted Jesus Christ. Yippee, yippee. But I could say, I shared the message of Jesus with John, and he walked away and didn't do anything. Then Brother Mel may talk to John, and then all of a sudden John says, I see the light. Then Mel would go, yippee, yippee, yippee. See, we are not always the one who receive the benefits of us sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. But we should be at least planting the seed. And maybe somebody else can water and germinate that seed. It's very evident that we are reflectors of Jesus' light. Not only that, but to be a light of Jesus to, is to live his life on this earth. In other words, our testimony. So what is the function of light? We're talking about light. What is the function of light? It exposes darkness by the light. Darkness is expelled as soon as you hit the light switch. People are not aware of the darkness they live in if they don't see the light. The people who were sitting in darkness saw a great light. The question is, does our light, and we all have a light, does our light help people see more clearly? Or does our light just add confusion to the walk? Light serves as a guide. Now, how many here have been in a cave before? Now, how many has been in a cave that's so dark you can't see? Now, how many stayed in that cave without a light? You see, it's in our best interest that when we go into a cave and you can't see, we have a light. And uh, that's the one thing you need in the cave is light. To explore a cave without a light, now I'm just assuming this, but to explore a cave without a light can be harmful. It can be dangerous. We are the light. And we are the guides to people walking in darkness. Let your light shine. Light is to be seen. There's no such thing as a secret Christian, but I think there are people who try to be. We're not to be secret Christians. You know, if somebody would ever say, who's a Christian? That's not the question you want to ask. I have asked of you. You see, when people ask, are you a Christian? Then maybe we're not letting our light shine so people know that we were in a faith. That we were in a faith. You see, we need to be the light at all times, 24-7. Our light shines that people will be attracted to us, but people will be attracted to Jesus. You see, the light's not to shine upon us. Hey, I'm in the faith. Do you know Jesus? Now, see, that's bringing attention to ourselves too much. But you say, do you know Jesus? She, they should see Jesus. That's, that's what we want the light to be, to shine, is on Jesus. A light is meant to shine and give direction. Individuals described in Matthew 5, verses 3, 10, and that's talked about the Beatitudes, would obviously, obviously radiate and point others to the proper path. Their influence would be evident like a city on a hill or a lamp on a stand. A concealed light placed under a bowl would be useless. Again, a light under a bowl would be useless. Light radiating people live so that others see their good deeds and give praise not to them, but to the Father in heaven. See, our good deeds is not to bring attention to us, 
is to be to bring attention to Jesus. And you remember the story about light under a bushel, verse 15, light under a bushel. Palestinian homes were generally dark, having one small window, and they did not have electricity and light bulbs like we have today. The light consisted of a lamp, which was a vessel or bowl filled with oil and had a wick. When they needed a light, the lamp was placed on a lamp stand. And the most difficult thing of having this light in the house was lighting the lamp. How did they light a wick back in the days of Jesus Christ? I don't think they had matches. I'm pretty sure they didn't have lighters either. As a result, no one wanted the wick to lose its flame because it took a lot of work to get that flame back on the wick. But when people went out of the house, it was dangerous to leave the light on. So for safety reasons, they left their homes and a lamp would be taken from the lampstand and placed under an earthen vessel so it could burn risk-free. And as soon as they returned, they would put the lamp on the lampstand. Sadly, too many Christians have got their light hidden. We need to take that vessel away from our light so people can see. No one lights a light only to put it under a basket or earthen vessel. We are to let, let our light, light shine to the maximum. We are to dispel darkness. We are to dispel darkness. Isaiah 60. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thickness darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Do people come to your light? If we are the light of Jesus, do people come to our light? Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Every Christian is a light to direct others to Jesus. But you don't have light of your own any more than the moon has light without the sun. Or a light bulb has light without being connected to a power source. You see, our light comes from Jesus Christ. It's interesting. I looked at a lot of translations last night. I can't find this. Jesus didn't say, you are the light of Pittsburgh and Arcanum. I can't find that. You know, just Pittsburgh, you know, that's, that's your light. But I did find when Jesus says, you are the light of the world. You see, we are to share the gospel through our light in the whole world, where their families, our friends, our workplace, our community, that is where our light is to shine. When life light starts in September, we give a little light shine to the fourth graders of Pentham and Little. We are the light. And the people need to see the message of Jesus Christ by our light. Being a light means giving out the word of God in one way or another. This doesn't mean that you should be quoting scriptures all the time, although there's nothing wrong with quoting scriptures. But it does mean that you are to share the light that God has given you. Filling the earth with God's glory. We talked about salt, and we talked about light. So the question is, what are the differences between salt and light witnessing. What is the difference between salt and light witnessing? It is crucial to understand the difference between these two. Salt works and expands itself silently, but you see it operating. Things are delicious without seeing the salt. When you have that thick, juicy steak. Do you see the salt grains on the steak? But when you take that first bite of the steak, you just know it's there. 
You don't have to do a Bible study to be salt. Your influence, your peace, your meekness, your mercy. It only takes one of these for your influence to open their eyes. God is saying, just give me one grain of salt, and I will affect the lives of many. Now this should be an easy question. How many of you have gotten sick before? Who has never ever gotten sick before? Okay, that's 100%. Think about this. It all started with one little bug. So one little bug can cause that kind of a headache. Think about what blessings one grain of salt can offer. On the other hand, light has a different kind of effect. Light is visible. It is seen. It works openly, right? And this is when you openly share your faith to others. Salt is more discreet. Light is more open. People need to see our salt and light witness. They need to see how Jesus is seasoning your life. They begin to ask the question, why do you have that special glow? When people see us, they should say, especially if they're not a believer, they should say, there's something special about you, Norma. What is it? Oh, really? What's so special? something about you that's special? You see, we should be glowing in Jesus Christ. And when people see us, do they see the glow of Jesus Christ? Do they see the light? They need to see how Jesus is seasoning your life. Verse 16 doesn't say, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works, glorify you, pat you on the back, and give you a medal. Yeah, we'll read this one more time. Verse 16, and it's today's scripture verse, doesn't say, if your, if your Bible does say that, I want to see it. It does not say, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works, glorify you, pat you on the back, and then give you a gold medal or a gold star. I don't think that that's how it works. It says, you and I are to let our light so shine in this world that they may glorify our Father, which is in heaven. You see, testifying is not about is about glorifying God. Remember, we are just reflectors of light. For it is God who commanded light to shine out of the darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But yet, we are like mirrors. We reflect the light. But in order to reflect the light, we need to be in position or need to position our mirrors to the light. We do this by reading God's word, by devotions, through Bible study, through prayer, and sometimes just going out to your prayer closet and just have reflection, just you, Jesus. As we position ourselves each day to Jesus, the light will shine automatically. We don't have a light switch. Although some days our light may not be shining as bright as other days. People will see and experience the glory of God from our light. And now for those two famous words. In conclusion, I'm going to read 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. 
Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God, calling to make it known to all the world. Think about this as I wrap this up this morning. Imagine that Peter wrote these verses just for you. Peter wrote these just for you. Let his words be an encouragement to engage with your culture or society, your family, your friends, your workplace, without compromise. And in today's world, that's important. Without compromise. And to fulfill God's calling to make him known to all the world. The time has come for us to be salt of the earth. It's time for us to be the light in the world. To shine the glory of God and reflect his character. When people see in us the character of God, then the message will spread like wildfire. The Pittsburgh Church of the Brethren and all of God's children need to be salt and light in this world. Brothers and sisters, you are the salt and and light of this world. The aim and purpose of our lives should be to glorify God. So let's go and affect and influence the world to help build God's kingdom. And all God's people said,